Okay, stock L92 intake valve measures 2.165. Our factory rev replacement valve measures 2160. And uh, our larger bore valve measures out at 2 inches 180 uh, and a couple extra thou for a good measure. Uh, as far as weights are concerned, um, factory uh, intake valves average between 106 and 109 grams. Uh, the uh, REV 2160 valves, we typically see them at around 107 to 110 grams. And um, the X1133 uh, usually adds about uh, two to three more grams of weight uh, on top of the uh, 2160 valve. So usually around uh, 112, sometimes to 113. Uh, REV makes a uh, hollow valve. Um, the, um, the hollow valve ends up uh, right around 90 grams uh, in its 2160 size. So uh, you can actually lighten up the, uh, uh, the valve train pretty good with these things. Although uh, most of our customers are running L LS3 or L92 heads with the, uh, the low profile uh, factory plastic intake manifolds, uh, which tends to limit RPMs to 61 to 6500 RPM. And at those speeds, uh, the solid stem valves are, uh, are uh, very good, very comfortable. Uh, no trouble cycling with uh, about 155 pounds of seat pressure and 390 pounds of open pressure. Uh, exhaust valves don't seem to have a whole lot of problem, uh, obviously because they're a lot lighter. Uh, the, uh, uh, the exhaust valves that we use are from REV also. Uh, we can use standard uh, stainless valves for most applications or uh, Inconel exhaust valves for um, the uh, high temp supercharger and turbocharger applications. Cool, yeah, the, the one thing I wanted to talk to everybody about also about, about this head and why it works so good is is the time spent on the actual seat shape and you know how, you know, a lot of these cams that we're using, they're, they're 650 and under valve lift and how important it is to get the right seat shape because if the seat shape is, is shit, you got, you got, doesn't matter what kind of porting you have, you got a shit head if you got a shit seat. Yeah, very true. Um, angles, uh, small differences in angles make uh, pretty large differences in uh, in overall airflow um, across the lift curve. So uh, some shapes will produce real good flow from 0.1 lift to 0.5 lift, um, but uh, cause the port to peak flow at, at 550 lift. Uh, other shapes will. Uh, will hurt the low lift flow uh, in exchange for producing better high lift flow. Uh, so we try to come up with a, a combination of, of angles and widths of, of angles that uh, produce a, a real broad flow curve from, from the 100 to the 650 lift range. Uh, and the L92 port typically peaks between uh, 630 and 650 lift. Hmm. All right, so the head is, this is one of the heads that have been finished and uh, give you an idea of what it, the chamber looks like after it's been finished. I mean just super, the entire chamber is 100% uh, ported and uh, we're getting ready to do a you know, super trick valve job, call it black magic top secret stuff. And then if you look at the exhaust port, I guess the video is really not going to do it justice, but the whole exhaust port is totally done. The intake looks like it's kissed, but if you really get a good look at the short turn, which you can't really see too much of, but the short turn is the magic on, on here. It really is it's worth about 25 numbers, the way the, the valve seat and the short turn are set up. As we go through to machine the seats, um, we use carbide pilots to uh, register the, uh, the seat machining tool. We're going to go ahead and set up our insert cutter uh, on our setting fixture over here on this bench. A lot of these tools and fixturing we've 
uh, either built or adapted ourselves uh, to suit you know what what type of jobs that we need to have done uh, to be able to measure uh, and preset our tools so that we can consistently machine the seats. Uh, you know the diameters need to be consistent uh, from one head to the next and from one setup to the next. So um, we keep a lot of notes in log books and um, um, a lot of development work testing and flow testing valve jobs uh, because uh, as we mentioned earlier they can change uh, quite a few factors. So uh, that's really uh, uh, how a uh, CNC machine can really benefit your development curve um, because we no longer have to worry about guessing if, uh, if the same port program um, results in different flow. Uh, we can measure our, our uh, changes in our valve seat profile and uh, calculate those flow differences and uh, we're able to use all the ports on one particular cylinder head instead of just having to test particular seat angles on one uh, cylinder head alone. So right now we're going to go ahead and, which one are we cutting? The cutting intake right now? Yeah, we're going to machine the end intake seat. So we'll float the head over. This machine it has a floating head so you push on it, it centers itself on the pilot. That's the steel part sticking out of the valve guide. And uh, the tool has a ball drive here to account for any slight angle changes and differences. in here. Rich, can I get a close-up of the cutter? Yeah. This is the insert cutter. You can see if you if you look at the insert, that carbide blade right there, let's, let's spin it just like, ooh. Yeah. Let's see if I can get a... That's... Yeah, so this carbide blade has all your radius and angles cut into it. So this is what actually cuts the valve seat. All across this edge here. And that really is a huge part of airflow, is that shape right there. I mean, it's crazy to look at something that small being a big deal, but that is a huge deal to horsepower right there, is knowing what shape to put on that valve seat, because that's what allows the air to turn around the valve and uh, that is a it's a big deal this is a what we call a form tool which has as you can see uh, multiple angles or shapes in it that uh, uh, leaves its uh, its edges and and the uh, um, sort of the positive of it uh, onto the onto the seat surface let's go take a look at the seat there So that is the finished intake valve job, and uh, like I said before, it just uh, makes a big difference. I mean, you'll see low lift numbers with the right valve job as much as 15, 20 CFM up on, on certain spots, you're getting the right uh, profile there. So here's the stock combustion chamber. And then there's the finished combustion chamber. What a difference, huh? Stock valve job, or this is the finished valve job. And stock valve job. You get a look at this exhaust port here. And 
you can you know see some casting flash and it's actually not a bad cast port as far as cast port goes.